Hello. Hey, uh, this is for Uncle Doug. Thank you for showing some interest in this topic. Um, we have a little science project going here. Uh, I bought an ESR meter, the Peak ESR Plus or ESR 70. And I'm trying to determine if my Tweed amps, my 1959, 1960 amps, need a cap job. Even though I've already done one cap job on them around 10 years ago. What was confusing, and Uncle Doug has several videos on the, on the subject of ESR readings, is that I was getting good readings on these old 60-year-old uh, Mallory caps. One interesting thing that I noticed, the schematic shows... 20 microfarads by 600 volts, right here. And these original Mallory's show 500 volts. Because you, know, you can't get 600 volt caps anymore that'll fit in the pan. And so anyway, I just thought that was interesting. But I think, you know, according to Gerald Weber, you still end up with more than 500 volts on those caps at times, especially with the, the high uh, 121 volt house voltage that we have now, AC. But here's the deal. I, I bought these caps over here from uh, Kendrick because he has he's the only one that has these higher capacity caps. And they all measured very low. Then I bought these Sprague Adams from Mauser for the Bandmaster, which are 16 microfarad. All they have is 475 volt. These are the original 16 by 450 volt. So theoretically, the higher voltage cap should have a lower ESR reading of a new 450 volt cap, same microfarad, 16. But this is the deal. See that, that big blister right there? This is what we've been talking about. I'm going to measure that cap right now. And it's right next to a brand new one. Here we go. Showing 18 microfarads, 18.33 at 1.47 ohms. Doesn't sound that high. So now I take this. It looks like a good cap, right? But you see the blister. I don't think I would run that thing in my amp. And then I come over here on a perfectly brand new cap, do the same test, and it's 18.47 microfarads and uh, 3.2 ohms. So according to ESR readings, this thing, the new one, is in worse shape than the old one, which that does not make sense to me. Here, I'll measure the other new one. 17.9 uh, uh, microfarads at 3.2 ohms. So what's the deal? I don't understand. Now, I did find this one here, the old uh, 59 Bandmaster cap, which doesn't look near as bad as that other one. It was an open circuit. It did not test at all, which I'm... I'm surprised. It won't even won't even kick off the meter. It just says open circuit low capacitance. And here are the old. Uh, let's test these old Mallory's. Now they don't have. They do have a little bit of a blister on each one. Uh, maybe not even that one. Let's see. Just a barely a, a blister. And they're testing good. Now those are 20 microfarad. There's no way I'd run these again either. Showing 30.18 microfarad at 1.37 ohms. Now let's take that and measure a brand new one. 1.37. And this is a Kendrick cap. Custom showing 19.94. You heard that double ping? That means it's low ESR, 
which is equivalent series resistance, which is su supposed to be an indication of the health of the capacitor. 0.31 ohms. So, you know, that, in that way, th these measurements would make me think that these caps are definitely not good. 30.27 at 1.36 ohms. Either way, that's, that's what I'm dealing with. The ESR meter did not help me determine easily that I need to do a cap job. But Gerald Weber and other amp people say, you know, every 10 years. So why do they say that? I don't know. Gerald actually recommends every six years, which I'm just about six years on the Bandmaster, but the cap sat around for four years. So they're all, all, all those caps are almost 10 years old. I'm going to change them and we'll find out. But I'm also in the next section of this video, I'm going to test some of these for uh, DC leakage. All right, here we go. If you notice in the lower left hand corner, I'm actually plugged into Uncle Doug's current limiting device, that light bulb. Uh, thank you, Doug, for giving us the instructions on how to make those. Now you can see where I've got the jumper connected. Don't do this at home because it's probably not the safest thing in the world. That's 438 volts DC coming off that side of the standby switch. And it's going to the new cap, the new uh, 16 UF 475 volts. So it's almost to its limited, I mean its limit. All right, now I've got my meter here. I'm taking, since this cap is forming, it's going to take a long time to get down to no leakage, which I wasn't anticipating. So I may have to come back to this cap and we'll do some, the old caps and see what happens. It's slowly going down. I don't know how long that would take. And I guess this is actually interesting to me because I have not done this ever. And you can see the voltage just slowly working its way down. I know one of my buddies is going to say, that's why I use a Variac. <laughs> but as far as I know, this voltage is supposed to work its way down to zero. And it looks like it's going to take maybe an hour or so. Okay, I just, just marked this voltage, 318 volts. When I'm going to stop the test, by the time I turn it off, it'll probably be at 310 or something. Okay, I mean, even though the light bulb doesn't light up, I forgot what wattage Uncle Doug says to use, but it's pretty high, 200 watts or... I forgot. Either way, uh, the bulb's not lighting, but it's pretty warm. So here we go on the old bubbled up Bandmaster 1959 cap. Let's hope it doesn't blow up. Well, this is another interesting development. Maybe this test method isn't that, that accurate. Or maybe that thing's leaking that much. That doesn't make sense to me. Either way, I'm going uh, the 400... 438 volts into the positive terminal of the capacitor. And then I'm measuring the red lead, as you can see on there, on the negative. And then I've got the negative lead of the meter going to ground on the amp up here. See the black at the tube socket. Either way, this is not working. Okay, this one appears to be leveling out. It's going very slowly. So, I don't know, I'm still confused. Okay, here we go with the brown Mallory that came out of the 1960 basement. Well, I, I must be doing something wrong, so that's why I'm sending this to Uncle Doug. This is not telling me much of anything. I expected the voltage to drop down very quickly to zero. 
uh, I guess it's this, these huge uh, electrolytic caps that that's not the way they work. Uh, the as yellow astrons will drop down within a few, you know, a minute maybe at the most. So let me try that new cap one more time and see if it built back up or if it's it stayed at 315, 310. Okay, here's the new cap again. Got to flip the standby switch, but we ended up at around 315, 310 volts. So it was definitely dropping. Yeah, see it went back up to 390. It's not even back to where it was. I'm going to leave this on here for a little while. I'm going to do this video and send it to Uncle Doug. Thank you for your help. And maybe I can you can help me understand this a little better. Come up with a better leakage test on electrolytics. Apparently, I'm not doing something right. But thanks for watching and thanks for your help.